Hello everyone, we are back today in our third installment of our FAQ. One we have monthly where we ask our followers on Instagram if you have any questions for us. So let's get right into it. Here's the first question, explain about signal chain. So he's talking about how to put your guitar effect pedals in order. Now the first thing I'll consider is if you have a fuzz pedal. Now some fuzz pedals are a bit fussy and they like to be connected right after the guitar. So if you have a fast pedal which is not sounding right when it's in the middle somewhere in your signal chain, you might want to consider putting the fast pedal first. So let's assume we have a sensitive fast pedal. I would put the fast pedal in. Following that, I would put a wah pedal. And if you have a phaser effect, I would put the phaser effect there as well early in the chain. Following that, I would put my light overdrives next. So not your heavy sounding distortion again, light sounding overdrives. Following that is your heavier gain, the more heavier distortions. Following that, I would put an EQ or a volume boost. So it depends what you want to use to be able to boost the volume of your guitar signal in case you want to solo in a band mix. Now, after that, I would consider putting a volume pedal. And where you put the volume pedal is going to matter. If you put it after your distortion and gains, it's going to adjust the volume. But if you put it before your gains, uh, or should I say closer towards the guitar, then you're going to be adjusting the amount of gain instead of the volume. Now after the volume pedal, I add all your modulation pedals. So if you have a flanger, if you have a chorus, if you have a vibe, you might want to put those pedals there. Following that, I would put my delay pedals. Uh, right after that, it would either be the tremolo or my reverb because if you check out some of the old Fender amps or current Fender amps where there's a built-in tremolo effect on the amp, it is typically at the end of the chain. So it's typically after the reverb. So it is up to you whether you want to put the tremolo before the reverb or after the reverb. Oh, and finally, if you have a compressor, I would definitely want that as early in the chain as possible. So before the wah pedals. So to recap, I would put fuzz, compressor, wah, phaser, light overdrives, mild overdrives, followed by heavier overdrives, following that a volume boost or EQ to cut through a mix, volume pedal, modulation pedals, delay pedals, tremolo, reverb, and that would be my recommended signal chain. Next question, FM3 versus the Quad Cortex, my opinion. Now it's a bit difficult for me to give my opinion because I've not had the physical unit with me to test it out. But judging by the videos that are going around, the Quad Cortex is sounding really good. But compared to the FM3, I'm very familiar with how the FM3 sounds. It has all your conventional guitar tones. It's really easy to set up. So I'm still waiting for a physical unit to arrive in store so I can properly compare the two. But I cannot deny that what I'm hearing in the videos does sound really good. If I want to become a songwriter, what do I do? Number one, you got to listen to a lot of songs you got to kind of expand your vocabulary because think about writing an essay but you don't have the words for it. So you got to listen to a lot of songs, number one, so you can get an idea of how to structure a song, intro, verse, chorus, bridge, etc. In terms of writing lyrics, well, that just comes with practice and the more you write lyrics and the more you write melodies, you start to get the hang of putting them in the form of a song and fitting certain phrases within certain time frames. So, practice. Next question, can the HX Stomp be connected to a studio monitor instead of an amp? Yes, you can too. Yes, you can do that. But what you have to do is you got to turn on the cap simulator on the HX Stomp and you're good to go. What's the most expensive electric guitar? If you're talking about the one in our store, it is definitely the ESP uh, James Hetfield signature guitar, the Iron Cross. It's going over 20,000 ringgit. Best budget reverb pedal. Uh, one I can recommend is the Joyo Space Verb. I have a video on our channel. You can check that out. Uh, cheap reverb pedals. And if you want a bit more features compared to the Space Verb, because the Space Verb has three different kind of reverbs, you can check out the Joyo Atmosphere, which is going for RM299. That has a ton of features. And you can also check the demo on our channel called the Joyo R series pedal. And the pedal is featured there. Is Kemper still relevant after Neural DSP invented Quad Cortex? Well, it depends. I've always placed the Kemper as a very different thing. If I'm comparing to say the Fractal, it is pretty much apples and oranges 
because with the fractal it is modeling an amp um, exactly so for example if i took a marshall amp per se and the actual amp when you rotate the bass middle treble from 0 to 10 the fractal is modeling that exact range that's there whereas the camper is more of a snapshot of an amplifier so if i had a marshall and i set it up in a certain way the camper kind of saves that profile so all the EQ settings on the Kemper is more of a fine tuner. So the Kemper I always see it more as someone who owns a lot of amps or they've recorded with multiple amps in the studio. So they have like one album and they've recorded like 10 with 10 different amplifiers. What they can do is to replicate that same exact sound live. They can profile all those amplifiers and put it into the Kemper profiler. So it is apples and oranges, it's a different thing, so it depends on what you want. You want to profile your own amps, or you want to buy people's profiles, or you want a true modeling, uh, you know, point to point uh, exact tone from an amp. So it depends what you want. Do you like Gojira? Who doesn't like Gojira, right? Everyone loves Gojira. Favorite Ibanez. My favorite Ibanez, the one that I currently own, is uh, the AZ series. So mine is the AZ242, made in Indonesia. I've owned a few Ibanez guitars uh, in the past, but that seems to be the one that I'm not uh, able to get rid of. It is one of the most versatile. I use it in a lot of session work, live work. The pickups are great. The build is great. Excellent value for money there. Best home studio setup below 1.5K. So uh, I always recommend to people that if you've not owned you know, any particular recording setup before, you, you, you don't know what software to choose, what microphone to choose. Uh, the product I always recommend is the PreSonus AudioBox 96 Studio Ultimate Package. So it has the interface, the microphone, headphones, studio monitor uh, speakers, as well as um, the DAW, the software to record with. So you can check that out. Orange or Marshall? I love both amps, but I would say if I'm using pedals, I will go through the orange. It takes pedals better. I prefer the clean channel on the orange amps. If I'm going to use only the distorted channel, I'll probably use the Marshall. Next question. Are bands still relevant nowadays in Malaysia? I'm in a band. Are you saying I'm not relevant? Huh? Are you saying I'm not fabulous enough to be in a band? The next question is from Pookzilla, my friend Omar. Why is life so hard again? I don't know, bro. I cannot explain to you why. Life is difficult, but I find that the ability to buy guitars to give us temporary happiness is all worth it. Just worth it. Next question. One guitar you personally never thought you would like, but did. Uh, in my early years, I never thought that I would like a Les Paul style guitar, an LP style single cut. I played a, a few when I was younger, but I was like, how could anyone play this guitar? You know, it's not comfortable at all, whatever. But as the years went by and I got my first Epiphone and eventually to get my Gibsons, I kind of like realized why the guitar is so great. It just fits in my band mix. It sounds amazing. And now the Les Paul is probably one of my main guitars for playing live with my band. Next question is a really technical one. How can I fix a misaligned six screw tremolo DIY? Uh, this is not going to be easy because you'd have to number one, fill up the holes with dowels and you got to drill new holes. So this is not an easy task to do by yourself. If you don't have the confidence or if you don't want to wreck the guitar completely, you can send it to a competent guitar tech. And your follow-up question, what is the string spacing on the nut for the PRS SE? You've got to check the specs online for that. Tone wood change tone. I do believe tone wood changes tone. I believe in tone wood. I think that the different density of wood will change the kind of tone that you get and the kind of response. The harder the wood, the response is going to be faster. You're going to get a bit more brighter attack. The less dense the wood, uh, you're going to get a bit more bigger, you know, bass and bottom end. Good wireless guitar jack. Now, the one that we always recommend to customers when they want to get to use for live shows is the Sennheiser XSW2 or XSW1 CI1. So it's a guitar wireless system with the uh, belt pack and the receiver. If you're someone who's playing at home, uh, you can, or you know, really small venues, small pubs, you can check out the X5 U2, which is only running about around 500 plus ringgit. Can I use a multi channel adapter for my G1 X4 multi effects instead of using the AD16 adapter? Uh, I'm guessing you mean that you want to use the multi effect with a daisy chain so you can use it with other pedals. So you're talking about maybe like a one spot adapter. 
You can use it with one square adapter because the, the rating for the G1 uh, X4 is 9 volts, 500 milliamps. So a one square adapter has 1,700 milliamps, so you should be able to support your multi packs with no issues. Next question, recommend me a passive humbucker for bridge in HSS for heavy riffing and searing solos. Luckily, you said passive because I'm going to say EMG pickups. <laughs> but since it's passive, you can consider maybe a uh, Simo Duncan uh, Pegasus or a Nazgul bow. Probably go with the Pegasus so you can kind of like match the outputs of the single coil. If you're in doubt, you can easily just email each of the pickup manufacturers. You can send an email to DiMarzio or Simo Duncan. Mention to them your specs of the guitar, so the pickup configuration, the kind of bridge, kind of wood that's on the guitar. And you can tell them what is lacking in your current bridge humbucker and what you are looking for and they will be able to recommend something that should suit your needs. Recommended microphone for singing apps such as Smule and WeSing. Now we don't have a specific mic to work with a phone but what we usually tell our customers to buy is the TC uh, Helicon Go Vocal. So this will act as an interface uh, through your phone so you can get any microphone of your choice with the XLR cable go into the Go Vocal and go into your telephone. Next question, what should I do if I want to change tuning from standard to drop B? Uh, so the first thing you gotta wanna do is you gotta get thicker strings since it's gonna be down tuning and you wanna retain the same amount of tension as opposed when you're having standard tuning. Next, you gotta adjust the truss rod. The thicker strings might shift the neck a little bit. And number three, you might want to adjust the intonation on your guitar because it might run as well. So, summary, Thicker strings, can adjust your neck and probably your intonation. Bought a cheap guitar at MB Music Bliss. Should I upgrade my pickup or buy a pedal to have a good sound or better sound? Now, if you're already happy with the way it sounds, then you can probably just get a pedal. But if you find that you know the pickups are slightly lacking, maybe you feel the pickups are too dark, you want it a bit more brighter, then maybe you'd want to try to change the pickups first before buying a pedal. Donovan, may we see an R&B playthrough someday? Hashtag power. Bro, if you come back to Malaysia and you teach me how to play R&B, then we can have an R&B playthrough. For those who don't know Donovan, follow his Instagram, Donovan underscore Kong. The dude is a monster player. What is the best mic for home vocal recording? I personally like the Rode NT1 because it sounds great, number one. And number two, it has a very low noise floor. It doesn't pick up as much. Uh, background noise compared to other mics, so I would take, uh, give the NT1 a look. Favourite DAW? Well, I started on Cubase and ever since then I could never really use any other DAWs, uh, be it Reaper and whatnot, so, and I'm a Windows user, so my favourite is Cubase. Best budget multi-effect below 1000? I would definitely recommend the GE200, it's only about 800 plus. It is one of the multi-effects where it completely surprised me when I plugged it into my interface direct and it sounded really great for the price. So that's what I would recommend, the Moore GE200. Best cheap guitar amp for home training? Well, you're going to just be practicing at home and you don't need something too big to bring anywhere. Uh, I'm really thinking small, so I'll recommend you the Blackstar Fly 3. I own one and it's really easy to carry around anywhere, uh, to warm up before a show just to play at home, noodle around, it sounds really good. Using Amp Sims, Neural DSP, Bias Effects versus real amps such as Marshall Stacks, etc. for a live setting. I think both have their place. If the venue seems inconvenient for you to bring an amp of such size, a stack, or if there's no backline company supplying those kind of amps, then of course using multi effects or using this kind of plugins is going to be the way to go and it's especially when you're not going to be playing you know an hour or two hours set you're going to just go to you know like a festival play three songs plugins are the way to go because they're just convenient but of course nothing is going to beat a full stack just blasting in your face with the speakers moving it's a different feeling because of the level of compression and how open uh, an actual amp sounds it's it's nothing compared to a plugin. Recommend any versatile amps looking for Megadeth, Hendrix kind of sounds. I would recommend the Hughes and Kettner Tube Meister Deluxe 20 is right there, somewhere there in the corner. Yeah, it's there on the video there, right there. Uh, I use this amp for all demos, all our music list demos. So all the pedal demos, guitar demos, it's definitely this amp seems to be the most versatile sounding one to me. And therefore, that's what I would recommend you to get the Tube Meister Deluxe 20. How to get Kirk Hammett live tones? Well, if you want to get his exact tone, 
you might want to invest in a Fractal XFX or the smaller counterpart, the FM3, because that is what uh, Metallica uses live. Best British style amp. I just tested the best British style amp ever. It's the Cheraton British style 2525. So there's a demo on our channel. It is based off a Silver Jubilee. It sounds absolutely amazing. The clean channel is awesome. The crunch is awesome. The high gain is awesome. It's all awesome. It's made in Malaysia, which is even more awesome. How to tune Kompang? <laughs> Use drum key. Tak pelik tahan aku cakap guna drum key. Okay, dah answer the question, done. Fender MIM Strat versus the Schecter Nick Johnson Traditional. I kind of like the modern appointments on the Nick Johnson Traditional. I like the roasted fretboard and neck. Uh, I like the flatter fretboard radius. I like that there's only two knobs, which is enough for me. I like the output jack position, which is uh, on the side of the body. Um, I just like how the Nick Johnson feels. And I would probably, if you asked me before the Nick Johnson Traditional ever existed, I would probably pick a MIM Fender. But if you ask me today, it's definitely the Nick Johnson Traditional. And you can check out the demo on our channel. I just did with a pink color version of the guitar. Last question here from my friend Dave. Ooh, we have the same name, Dave. I have a Focusrite 2i2 first gen. What are the differences between the first gen and the third gen? Also, which interface do you recommend for recording in a multi track environment between 8 to 12 channels? Now, one of the main differences with the first gen, because I've owned the first and second and I've tested the third as well. The issue with the first gen was there was a lot of um, issues with Windows so I would frequently have dropouts, the thing will disconnect, I've gotten blue screens and stuff like that from the first gen. So they kind of addressed all of those issues with the second gen, second gen was way more stable but some of the main difference with the gen 3 is number one you have the air mode or the air switch on the gen 3 so what that does is it breathes more air in other words it's just giving you a bit more presence to the tone. So if you find that you're using a particular dark sound on a guitar or if you want a bit more high end to the microphone you're using, you can just turn on the air mode on the interface. Number two, uh, probably one of the bigger features in the Gen 3 is the loopback function. So with loopback, um, what you're essentially doing is recording the source of your PC or Mac or whatever. So if you have, uh, for say, let's say you're going to record your guitar and you're going to play with a backing track, what you can do is when you're playing the backing track on your PC, uh, enabling loopback on the interface will allow you to record the system sounds. And what's cool is with this color, it is actually a cableless loopback function. Now, concerning the second half of your question, if you want to use something in a multi track live environment, you can check out the Zoom L12. Now, what's cool about this is you can use this as a standalone unit because you can record onto a memory card or you can hook it up to your PC or Mac and use it as an interface. And another thing that's cool about it is it has five monitor outputs for each of your band members and an internal metronome. There you go. Thank you all for submitting your questions. Hopefully, I got to answer most of them and satisfy your curiosity. So if you have any more questions, you can leave them down in this video below or follow our Instagram where we'll post a story asking you guys what you want to ask us. So then, take care. See you around. Mm. Okay, guys. All oh, right. nice. <laughs> okay, guys. Today, we're going to answer your questions right now. Yeah. <laughs>